The Clyde Beatty Show. The world's greatest wild animal trainer, Clyde Beatty, with another exciting story from his brilliant career. This master of the big cats captures ferocious jungle beasts and trains them to perform under the big top in the circus, where there are always thrills, action, and danger. Hundreds of dramatic behind-the-scenes adventures are all part of the Clyde Beatty story. Here in Mr. Beatty's own words is the story he calls Danger in the Deep. A few seasons ago, our circus played a week's engagement in enchanting Hawaii. At the end of our run, circus equipment and personnel were loaded aboard a steamer to return to the States. But what about Harriet and me? Well, we became tourists. We forgot all about guns and whips and steel arenas and concentrated only on enjoying the hospitality of the island. What'll it be now, honey? You want to stay here and relax on the exotic terrace of the Royal Palm Hotel? Or? Or swim in the moonlight at exotic Waikiki Beach? Or? Or visit the hula heaven where exotic native girls perform their dances. Oh, haven't you something more exotic? <laughs> <laughs> oh, those travel folders make it tough to decide, don't they? Oh, yes. But I won't be hard to please. I'll just be... Huh? What's the matter? Well, there's a couple coming toward our table. Aren't they the ones we met the other night? The, the Randalls? Oh. oh, yes, the J. Wilson Randalls. That's right. I heard he's done very well in the apple business over here. <laughs> Pineapples, dear. Oh, all right. I was half right anyway. Well, well, Mr. and Mrs. Beatty. Good to see you again. I believe you've met my wife, Rita. Yes, oh. yes, the other night. How are you, Mrs. Randall? Oh, just fine, thanks. Hello, Mrs. Beatty. I hope we're not intruding. Oh, not at all. Clyde and I were just relaxing. Please join us, won't you? Thanks, but we... Now, nah, come on, come on, have chairs. You're not interrupting a thing. As a matter of fact, maybe you can help us. Well, in that case, we'd be glad to. We're staying over for a few days and then flying back to the mainland, Randall. But we're in a typical tourist dilemma. I know. Can't make up your mind what to do, huh? <laughs> exactly. You've lived here several years, I understand. Perhaps you could give us a tip or two. Well, I don't know. I've long since gotten over my early enthusiasm for the place. Oh, that's Jay's way of saying he's bored to death with the monotony of life in the islands, Mrs. Beatty. Well, Rita's right, but that's neither here nor there. I, I do have one idea, though. I don't know whether or not you folks are interested in volcanoes. But one of our star attractions here is Mona Loa, you know. So the travel folders tell us, but they also tell us it's located on the island of Hawaii, and that's quite a distance from Oahu here, isn't it? Yes, but not too far. If you have some time, would you like to see it? Oh, we'd love to. I know it'd be wonderful, but... Say no more, fair lady. You're as good as there. What are you driving at, Randall? Well, I just happen to have a little boat that's raring to go. She's got good accommodations, and we've been looking for an excuse to get away for a few days anyway. Of course. You folks come along. You'd love it. <laughs> well, that's awfully nice of you. We'll it? accept no excuses now. Let's throw a few things in the suitcase and leave tonight. How about it? Well, what do you think, Harry? Well, it sounds wonderful. That means, yes, it's all settled then. And as your host, I promise you'll have a time you'll never forget. And now, back to Clyde Beatty. Harriet and I were enthused at the prospects of really seeing the islands, and a short time after receiving the Randalls' invitation, we returned to our room to pack the few things which we wanted to take along. Oh, I wish I'd known in advance we were going to take a trip like this. I don't have any clothes that are really appropriate. <laughs> Here we go again. You girls never seem to have the right kind of clothes. And you men never seem to worry about how you're dressed. Clyde, is that all you're taking? Well, sure. This isn't the lower line we're going on, honey. Oh, I guess you're right. It was nice of the Randalls to ask us to go, but... But? Well, I wonder why they did. After all, we scarcely know them. Maybe they liked our looks. They should yours, anyway. Oh, thank you, kind sir. Well, it should be fun, though. Sure, we're lucky. I always say, if you want to see a place the right way, have somebody who lives there show you around. Oh, I'll get it, honey. Hello? Yes, yeah, speaking. Okay, tell them we'll be right down. Thanks. That was the desk. The Randalls are waiting for us down in the lobby. No, they don't waste any time once they decide to do something, do <laughs> <No>. they? <laughs> Randall seems to be a man of action. You ready? All set. Okay, let's get with it, honey. Mona Loa, here we come.
It was almost midnight when we arrived at the yacht basin and pulled to a stop at one of the small piers. There, much to our surprise, we discovered that Randall's little boat was a sleek 60-foot cabin cruiser. Well, here we are, folks. What do you think of her? It's beautiful, Mr. Randall. Oh, she's a beauty, all right. <laughs> Thanks. She should be. Jay's like a kid with a new toy when it comes to this boat. He couldn't be more proud of it with a Queen Mary. Well, let's get aboard. <laughs> oh, Wong! Yes, Mr. Randall. Wong coming, Wong coming. Wong here's our cabin boy. Uh, take the luggage aboard, Wong. Mr. and Mrs. Beatty will have the starboard cabin, so put two bags in there, Wong. Yeah, hold on, Mr. Randall. Evening, Mr. and Mrs. Randall. Evening, Farley. Everything ship shape? Yes, sir. Oh, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Beatty, this is Frank Farley, my skipper. How do you do, Mr. Glad Farley? Glad to meet you, Farley. Thank you. Welcome aboard the Luana. Luana? My, what a pretty name. Oh, thank you, Mrs. Beatty. I picked that name out myself. Jay, we're keeping our guests standing. Let's go below, shall we? Of course. You can shove off immediately, Farley. Uh, yes, sir. But uh, when you called, you didn't tell me where we were going, Mr. Randall. Oh, uh, set a course for Hilo. We're going to show the Beatty's Mona Law, and then we'll uh, put in at Hilo first. Yes, sir. But uh, could I speak with you a moment before you go below, Mr. Randall? Why, sure. You folks go on. I'll be down in a moment. I don't know what's keeping Jay, but I'm rather tired. I think if you'll excuse me, I'll go to our cabin and turn in. Oh, of course, Mrs. Randall. Oh, that sounds like a good idea to me, too. Well, I hope you'll be comfortable. If there's anything you want, just ring for Wong. Thanks. Jay's quite the early riser. Sleep as late as you like. It's perfectly all right. Good night. Good night, Mrs. Good Randall. Good night. Yes, I'm glad. Sounds and feels like we're underway. Yes. Oh, what do you think of Randall's little scowl, honey? Clyde, I can't get over it. I surely didn't expect anything like this, did you? <laughs> no, this is wonderful. Get a load of the carpets and the furnishings. <laughs> Boy, the folks back in Chillicothe could only see me now. I know what you mean. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Clyde Beatty were the guests of Mr. and Mrs. J. Wilson Randall aboard their cruiser Luana on their recent trip to Hawaii. <laughs> Mr. Beatty will be remembered by his many friends here in Chillicothe as the lad who used to train dogs in his backyard. <laughs> okay, okay, I surrender. <laughs> I'll try not to let all this luxury turn my head. I'm really not worried, Clyde. You're not the type. I guess you're right. Who was it said you could take the boy out of the country, but not the country out of the boy? No, I don't know, but I'm glad it's true. And to prove it is, I'll admit I'm sleepy. I suppose now that we're underway, we may as well turn in and get some rest. How about it? Oh, that sounds good to me. And in the morning, we can enjoy ourselves on the calm blue Pacific. <laughs> Clyde, wake up. What's the matter, Harry? How can you sleep? This boat, it's pitching and rocking so much. Uh, hey, hey, you're right. Let me have a look out of the porthole. Oh. Wow, your calm blue Pacific is sort of kicking up its heels, honey. Oh, does it really look bad? Oh, it'll probably blow itself out soon. Have you heard the Randalls up and around yet? No, the only sounds I've heard have been made for the boat. They'll probably be up and we'll have some breakfast soon. Mm. In the meantime, I think I'll dress and go upstairs. I mean, I think I'll go above. Maybe Farley can tell me how long this is going to last. Oh, I just hope it doesn't last long. I... Why, honey, you're getting a little green around the gills. What's the matter? You feel sick? Oh, just a little woozy. I'll be all right. You go on up and talk to Farley. <laughs> You'll excuse me for asking, Mr. Beatty, but have you known Mr. Randall very long? Why, no. Matter of fact, we just met him last week for a mutual friend. Why? Well, I don't usually sound off, but... Uh, well, what is it, Farley, if there's something I should know? Randall knew we'd be headed right toward a squall. What? I told him about the weather report before we left last night. They've got storm warnings out from Maui to Oahu. But I don't get it. Why would he deliberately take us into it? Well, because he thought it'd be dangerous. But we were going to Mauna Loa on a pleasure cruise. From Mr. Randall's standpoint, it'd be dull unless there's some kind of thrill. Well, this is a new one. I saw a few men like him during the war, always trying to impress somebody with their disregard for danger. Weren't satisfied unless they were sticking the necks out a mile. Well, there's nothing smart about that. I'll sail with him wherever he wants, as long as he's alone. But this time, it involves you and Mrs. Beatty. To think of him getting us into a mess like this. Now, there's an inlet on the south shore of Molokai that's always calm. 
If these seas get me rougher, I'm going to insist we put in there. I'm glad to hear it. I thought we'd be able to relax and enjoy life for a change. Well, I'm sorry, Mr. Beatty. I just wanted you to realize... Well, I'm glad we had this little talk. I wonder if Randall's up yet. Yep, he's up. He had his head Wong bring him a couple of drinks. Drinks? At this hour? <laughs> he calls it his seagoing breakfast, Mr. Beatty. By noon, he'll think he's John Paul Jones. Farley, after this, remind me to stick to lions and tigers. <laughs> Glad you stopped in, Beatty. Bring Mr. Beatty a drink, Wong. Yes, Mr. Lionel. You like a lemon cola too, Mr. Beatty? No, thanks. Nothing for me, Wong. Yes, sir. I'll be back any minute, Mr. Lionel. Is uh, Mrs. Beatty all right? I mean... Oh, she's not feeling her best, Mrs. Randall. She's not used to this sort of thing, of course. Oh, I'm terribly sorry. I've been trying to convince Jay that we should return to shore. If I'd known about the weather report before this morning, why, we wouldn't ever have started. Oh, 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 that's a woman for you. I'll tell you, Rita, everything will be all right in a little while. We'll pass through this in no time. You'll see. Don't you think it might be wise? I think it would be wise for everybody to stop worrying. Stop trying to tell me what should be done. I know what I'm doing. I say there's no need for worry. Well, maybe you're right, but Farley seems to oh, think... Oh, Farley's that... an old woman. How we ever got to be a skipper of a PT boat during the war, I'll never understand. He's a sissy. <laughs> That sissy, as you call him, happens to have won two Navy crosses during the Philippines campaign, dear. Couldn't be that you're jealous of him, could it? But, jealous? You'll notice that he's working for me, Rita. Why should I be jealous? Never mind. You wouldn't understand. Uh, if you folks will excuse me now... now don't I... rush off, Beatty. Well, I think I'll go see how Harriet's getting along now. I'll, I'll see you later. Okay, Beatty. Don't worry about a thing. Everything's under control. <laughs> Just a second. Oh, hello, Wong. Mr. Beatty, you come in quick, please. Mr. Farley want to see you top tight, please. Okay, Wong, right away. Sit tight, honey. I'll be back in a minute. All right, Clark. Farley, what's the trouble? It's our starboard engine, Mr. Beatty. It's cutting out. I'm afraid it won't last much longer. Any idea what's the matter with it? Well, probably wet. We've shipped some water, and it may be just the ignition. I've got to have a look. Well, what can I do to help? Well, you hold the wheel here while I check that engine. Just keep her headed in this direction. Don't you think we better head for land, Farley? I've already come about. We're heading for Molokai now. Good. Well, what's all the excitement now? Our starboard engine, Mr. Randall. It's not running right. I'm heading for Molokai. Oh, so you decided to disobey my orders, huh, Farley? Well, I'm sorry, sir, but you hired me to run this boat, and this time I'm doing what I know is right. I should have done it long ago. This boat wasn't built for the punishment it's been taking the past hour. Don't be silly. You head back the way we were going. Nothing doing, Mr. Randall. We're shipping a lot of water, and if that engine goes, well... Farley's right, Mr. Randall. This is no time to be stubborn. Thanks, Mr. Beatty. Take the wheel here, will you? Right. I'm going to call the Coast Guard boat and give them our position, just to be on the safe side. Then I'll see what I can do about that engine. You're not going to call anybody on that radio, Farley. I'll teach you who's boss of this boat. No, Mr. Randall, stop. Don't touch that radio. Randall! Stop it. Now let's see you call the Coast Guard. Yeah. You shouldn't have done that, Mr. Randall. If we get in any more trouble than we're in now, it'll be curtains for all of us. Clyde, Mr. Farley. What is it, Harriet? The cabin. There's water coming up inside the cabin. What? Good grief. The pumps can't handle it. Well, Randall, any suggestions? I, uh, I, I don't know. Farley, Farley, what can we do? You better start praying, Mr. Randall. It's out of my hands now. Oh, Clyde, is it, is it that serious? I'm afraid it is, honey. It looks like our troubles have just begun. <laughs> And now, back to Klein Beatty and Danger in the Deep. Harriet and I were on a pleasure cruise in the Hawaiian Islands aboard the J. Wilson Randall 60-foot cabin cruiser. The morning after leaving Honolulu, we awoke to find the boat rolling and tossing in heavy windswept seas. And a short time later, when one of the boat's engines quit, Harriet discovered water coming up into the cabins below. Mr. Beatty, you hold a wheel here. And don't let it come about in the trough. Keep her headed into the waves. Okay. Well, where are you going? One of the forward hatches has been carried away, and i got to try to cover it before we're swamped. Oh, Clyde, what are we going to do? I don't know, honey. 
and it looks like a long swim to both guy. Well, why doesn't Farley call the Coast Guard? We can't now. Randall got mad when Farley suggested doing that and smashed the radio. Well, but why? He's too stubborn to admit he made a mistake. He didn't like Farley's taking matters into his own hands. Well, it's no use, Fady. I can't keep a footing on that deck. Farley, if water's coming into the cabin, won't it flood the engine compartment, too? No, the pumps will keep it out, I think. But with one pump not working, the water can still pour in the cabin. Our only chance is to get the emergency hand pump going. Quick. Okay, where's it located? Wong will show you. It's just after the galley. You're gaining on it, Clyde. There's only about an inch of water in the cabin now. Good. What's the report from above? Farley sighted the inlet. He says we'll be there in a little while. We're out of the roughest part of it, Mom. I just hope I can last here. Oh, you must be exhausted. I thought Mr. Randall came down to help you. He did. And he lasted about two minutes. I'm glad I'm in good condition. I think our host has learned a lesson, Clyde. He seemed to sober up in a hurry when he heard that water coming through. Well, he's learning the hard way. But I hope it takes. I've had about enough excitement for one day. This inlet goes back quite a way, doesn't it, Farley? Lucky thing you knew about it. Well, it's handy, all right. I put in here a couple of other times when it got too rough. It's amazing. The water in here is as calm as a mill pond. It's a lagoon right out of a Technicolor epic. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll drop anchor here and I'll see what's wrong with that engine. Can't get in too close on account of the coral reef. How deep is it here? Oh, 25 or 30 feet. Yeah, that'll hold her. Well, I guess I'll join the others back on the stern deck. Let me know if I can help any. Thanks, Mr. Beatty. I'll do that. Well, I was just coming to get you, Beatty. I haven't had a chance to really apologize for, well, for being so stupid and so stubborn. It's all over now. Let's just forget the whole thing. Thank you. I am sorry. I didn't realize. No harm done, Randall. Say, honey, isn't this a beautiful spot, though? Oh, it's lovely, Clyde. The water's as clear as crystal. You can see the bottom and all sorts of fish. Your wife tells me you're quite a fisherman, Mr. Beatty. Well, I don't get much chance at it these days, but I love to try. How do you fix for tackle, Randall? Oh, I, I think we've got a couple of outfits aboard. But say, I've got a better idea. Do you swim? Well, sure, why? Ever do any fishing with a spear gun? Underwater fishing? No, I've read about it, but I've never tried it. I'll bet you'd like it. It's one of my favorite sports. But you've got to have a bunch of fancy equipment for that, don't you? Oh, don't worry. I've got the equipment. And this is a perfect spot to use it. Wait, I'll, I'll get it out of the lock. Jay's anxious to show you a good time for a change, Mr. Beatty. And if you like swimming and fishing, this should be his best opportunity. Sounds like fun, all right. <laughs> Maybe we could get a fish dinner promoted here. Yeah? <laughs> and this time, you won't get away with any fish stories about the big ones that get away. We can see the whole show from here, you know. Here we are. You'll find swimming trunks in your cabin, Beatty. Thanks, but I brought my own along, Mr. Randall. Hey, what is all this stuff here? Oh, these are the cleverest gadgets you ever saw. They're called water gills. All you have to do is fasten the harness on your back and make like a fish. Water gills, huh? No doubt an improvement on the fish's own system, huh, Randy? <laughs> Almost. Now, this little tank here holds compressed air. Now, you breathe through the face mask that's connected to the little rubber hose. Why, I've stayed under more than a half an hour with one of these on. Well, that's hmm. amazing. But what are these other things? Oh, those are spear guns. Now, this spear is shot like an arrow by the powerful little spring here. And if your aim's good, you can kill a good-sized fish with one of these. That's enough for me. I'll see you in a minute. Clyde, where are you going? To get into my swim trunks. This looks like fun. Now, you watch me from the deck here first, Beatty. Then you can try it. By the way, what about sharks? Sharks? <laughs> I was wondering when you'd ask that. Now, don't worry. There aren't any sharks in this lagoon. The only thing you want to watch for is the... Um, Moray eel, but I haven't as yet seen one of those. You mean some eels will attack a person? The moray will. What? They're small but vicious, however. And as I said, I'm sure there aren't any around here. Well, let me get my mask on here, and I'm on my way. We'll be watching, Randall. Let's see you get a good fish. Oh, there he is. Watch. Huh. Heading for those fish down near the bottom. I see them. Over there by that bunch of coral rock. Oh, look. The fish. Don't seem to be frightened at all. Wait a second. He's aiming at one. Good shot. Look, he hit it. <gasps> Wonderful. That's a good-sized fish. Well, looks as if you'll get your fish dinner tonight, Mr. Beatty. He's bringing it up. Yeah, and all this time I've been trying to catch fish with a rod and reel. Well, this spear fishing looks like a lot easier. Here, Beatty. Take the spear line and pull him in. Okay. I got it. Good. I'll come up the ladder. Oh, Wong. 
We've got a fish for dinner. Come get him, will you? Oh, yes, Mr. Lando. Oh, that a very nice fish. Wong, fix him up good tonight. Well, put it on ice, Wong, and we may have more in a minute. All right, Mr. Lando. That was a big one, Jay. Not bad, huh, baby? Not bad at all. I'm anxious to try it myself. All right, here. Let's get your mask on. Oh, oh wait a second here. What's the matter? This oxygen hose has been pinched or something. There's a hole in it. Hey, I'm glad you noticed it before I went in. <laughs> You'd have discovered it soon enough. But you won't be able to use it, I'm afraid. I'll tell you what, I'll make one more dive as long as I've got this stuff all on. Then I'll give it to you and you can try it. Well, that suits me. I'd just as soon see you demonstrate the technique once more anyway. Okay. I'll be back in a couple of minutes. There's something I want to look into down at the bottom. Did you notice that cave-like formation down in that coral? Yeah, but it looked pretty dark down there. I don't well, think... Well, there might be a nice fish in that hole. Well, soon see. Jay, be careful. Those rocks are sharp. Your husband's quite a swimmer, Mrs. Randall. Yes, he is. But well, I'm afraid we're going to have to get back on one engine, folks. I can't seem to get the bad one fixed. All right, Farley. Mr. Randall's spearfishing. I'll tell him when he comes up. He won't be down long, Farley. He just wanted to look into a sort of a cave down on the bottom. <laughs> you wouldn't catch me down around the bottom of this lagoon. You never can tell what you might run into. Randall said there weren't any sharks around here. Isn't that right? Well, that's what I've been told, but... Oh, Farley! Mr. Beatty! What is it? What is... It's Jay. Look! Looks like something's got hold of him down there. Holy mackerel, it looks like an octopus. But he'd do something. Where's that other spear gun? Oh, here it is, Clyde. But well, what good will that do? I don't know, but I'm going down to try to help him. Please, Mr. Beatty, hurry. But, Clyde, the mask, it won't work. I know, I'll have to go without a mask. Oh, Clyde. That octopus is trying to drag Jay inside the cave. If, if he can only hang on to those rocks until Mr. Beatty gets down there. But what good will that little spear gun do against an octopus? Well, there's just a chance if he hits it in the right spot, it'll do the trick. Otherwise, they're both goners. <laughs> As I clutched the spear gun and swam toward the bottom of the lagoon, I could make out the dim figures in their desperate struggle. The dangerous monster was some 15 feet in diameter, his eight long tentacles covered with rows of suction cups. Randall could not escape unless I hit the octopus a paralyzing blow with a spear. I saw Randall's body go limp in the octopus grasp. The mask supplying the oxygen had been torn from Randall's face. Quickly, staying just out of reach of the waving arms, I took aim and fired the spear gun. It hit squarely into the nerve center of the monster's body. Immediately, the water changed into a black cloud as the octopus discharged an inky fluid. My lungs bursting for air, I fought for the surface, holding Randall's body in one arm. Oh. 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 Are you all right? Yeah. Yeah, I am. But I don't know about Randall. Oh. Here, I'll, I'll pull you forward. Come on. Up. Come on. Jay. Oh. There we I are. I think you'll come out of it okay, Mrs. Randall. Just... Lay him flat. I want to get some of the water out of him. Thank heaven. I'll keep up the artificial respiration for a minute. He swallowed a lot of water. Juan, get some brandy. Here's Mr. Lando. <coughs> oh, oh, he's opening his eyes. Oh. Jay, honey. <coughs> what happened to that octopus? Uh, better not try to talk, Randall. Just take it easy. I, I didn't see it. How did it get away? Well, you can thank Mr. Beatty, Jay. He dove down and shot it with the other spear gun. Oh. Thanks, Beatty. That, that was a thrill I wasn't looking for. I have an idea of the experiences Jay's had today. He changed his outlook, Mr. Beatty. <laughs> oh, let's hope so. A guy can stick his neck out just so far without getting his head lopped off. Well, I, I know Jay will want to prove that he's learned that when we get the engine fixed. He'll show you what a pleasure cruise should be like. Oh, that's awfully nice of you, Mrs. Randall, but... Maybe Clyde and I should just spend the rest of our time in Honolulu. Well, now, we won't hear of such a thing. We're still going to show you Mauer Loa, aren't we, Jay? Yes, absolutely. Please say you'll come. Well, we'd still like to see it, all right. From a respectful distance, of course. A respectful distance? Why do you say that? <laughs> just being cautious, Mrs. Randall. After seeing the spots your husband can get himself into, I don't think we should get too close to Mauer Loa. Huh? What do you mean, Beatty? I mean it'd be just like that volcano to start erupting and throwing rocks at us, and I'm too tired to duck. Oh. <laughs> Clyde will return in just a moment to tell us about his next exciting adventure. But first... And now, here is Clyde Beatty. Rare animals have always been highly prized by circus owners. A few years ago, while on an expedition in Siam, I found one of the rarest. 
After I arranged to buy it, I discovered danger and trouble were a part of the deal. And literally, I had a white elephant on my hands. When next we meet, you'll hear about a fabulous outcast elephant in a story called The White Rogue of Siam. All stories are based upon incidents in the career of the world-famous Clyde Beatty and the Clyde Beatty Circus. The Clyde Beatty Show is produced by Shirley Thomas. Danger in the Deep was written by Robert T. Smith and Frank Hart Tossig. All names used were fictional, and any resemblance to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. This is a Commodore production.